You look like you're having a question. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm back about one second. <clears throat> when you're talking about this FL or FI thing, I have a problem. I cannot find a yen mark on an English keyboard. Does, is there one? Well, if I transport a pin from Japanese, then when I send the email, they say, we did, you know, they don't get the yen mark. Well, I guess on work, on the MS DOS side, they have something like keyboard, like on the Mac, right? Well, in the old, before XP, at least as far as I know, I know about 2000 or, or millennium, you used to be able to hit alt and then the three digit ASCII code and they would put it up there. Because it is in the font set. Yeah. The three digit what? Why would they put a yen sign in the, in the English font sets? Because they have the yen, pound, and a couple other currency notes in there. Oh, you're it's talking the, about the Windows, what's it called? Visual. What's that called? It's like, it's like three or four letter abbreviation, not ANSI, but... but ASCII? ASCII. It's, it's, yeah. it's a Windows oh specific thing. Yeah, the so thing is, my, my point, the used Latin to, one. But that's how I used I to do it. Yeah. I used to hit the alt key and put in the three, the, the three numbers. So what's the three numbers you're talking about? I'm not. Well, ASCII, ASCII. <clears throat> okay, is oh, yeah. the code. Oh, oh yeah. That's what it's called. I don't know why. It doesn't make sense. Uh, it's oh, ASCII. I, I think the last is, is something. The last I is Institute. I, I will bet you big money that ASCII does not have the end sign. <laughs> but the Windows proprietary OEM one does. Maybe, maybe, maybe well, ASCII is only those first 128 we was talking about. <laughs> it's only the first 128. Yeah. The second 128 are omitted. That's why all of them have the first 128 standardized is because they follow ASCII. Yeah, I'm, I know Mac has it and I'm pretty sure Windows has something that, that, that's well, called my, keyboard. My problem and is that will show you. Option K. Yeah, option K. Yeah. Now, with XP, you can't do the alt and the three digits. So I have no way, I had to actually steal it off of this thing. This is Japanese OS. <laughs> Get the character. And then say, okay, copy that character, and then bring it over to my English machine into 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 Word and Excel. Okay, and then had to put up a special key where I put like yen sign and then tilde, and then it converts that huge thing down to the yen sign. And it'll print it out. It'll show up on the screen on my English machine. So it's there. But the question is, and the other guy read it. Well, yeah, it's two different problems. One problem is, is that both you guys had is that you know how to type it. That's one problem. Second problem is that even if Rowan was able to get it on there, maybe by the method used by copying it, the recipient couldn't read it. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Well, For instance, the shift JIS, if you have just a plain Japanese formatting, the backslash comes out as the end sign. Yeah. yeah. But if you send that to someone who has a US machine, it'll come out as a backslash again. Yeah. yeah. Well, my yen sign will come out as a yen sign because I do, I do all my bank accounting using the yen sign. And I use this machine and my other one. The other one's in English, and this one's in Japanese. And it'll read across. It'll show up on phone machines. You know, I know Excel has yen yeah. signs in it. So, but uh, yeah, if that is a problem with email. Is that you're very dependent upon the ever side. We've come a long way since the early days of back in the days of CompuServe and Source and ABA Net and, and stuff like that. Um, I remember I gave a, I wrote a chapter in a book on telecommunications and there were th things that I was said you can't do and at the time you couldn't do. You couldn't send a picture, you couldn't send any graph, you couldn't send a signature because at, at, at that time we were an ASCII only format. We did, you know, the emails only did ASCII, so. You didn't have those programs to turn your pictures into ASCII art. Well, <laughs> yeah. That was basically the only art you could do was out there. At that time, it couldn't be. Well, you're, you're doing the limitation of what the other person can do, what the other person's machine. Rule five, nine. If you want to control how something looks, the best thing within a web, uh, especially within a web site, Use cascading style sheets. You remember earlier, I think rule three or four was use styles, uh, use styles to get a consistency of look. Well, you can do the same thing in web pages with a cascading web, cascading style sheet. 
This is the cascading style sheet, and the initials .ss are the, you know, served by .html. The .ss, S, uh, CSS, is the file structure that, that browsers will look at, and they'll pull up the formatting that your web page is going to be. So like, for instance, this says that uh, uh, body text is going to be color black, left text left align, body bold is color navy, font style normal, font weight bold, line length height 100%. Uh, uh, the largest head, heading H1 is color navy, font weight 800, I think about the average is 400 or something like that, uh, weight height, uh, line height 100, font family uh, for, for Nana, no te uh, text decoration, text align center, word spacing, two point, letter spacing. So it, it, it looks, basically what happens is that someone opens up the, the Nagoya International Personal Computer Club web page and the look of the page is going to be determined by the style. And if I decide tomorrow that I don't like the color navy anymore, and so I change it to Latrues or something like that, all I have to do is change one document, post it back to the, to the web, and every page that you look at on uh, Nagoya International uh, Personal Computer Club website will be that color. So, so the beauty is you, it's an easy way of, of controlling and managing whatever. And finally, rule 10, when formatting is essential on a web page and you can't, you have to get it to look a particular way and you can't rely on the other person's browser, make it a PDF file and instead of an HTML. And in the Mac, and you know, it, on the Windows side, I think you simply buy Acrobat Pro, and on the Mac side, it comes bundled in with the, the, the Mac OS. And what that can do is, here's a web example of PDF. Before I came to Japan, I lived in uh, Marin, and we had Pamopias Valley, which was a nice rural suburb, you know, suburban area. And we had an improvement club. And this is the membership flyer that we posted up on the web. And it's a PDF format. And you can print it out, and it's perfectly, uh, perfectly exactly like we, we specified. The layout, exactly like we wanted. There would be almost impossible to make sure that we can get the layout on everyone's browser the same way. You know, with the uh, different type of columns and the change of, of where the placement of the art is and, and all the text. All we have to do is have someone with a slightly different browser settings and it can destroy how that looks. But this way we make, make it easy. So all I have to do is print out that PDF document, fill out the information and send in their $25 or $15 for how much it will That was the end of the formal presentation. But what followed was 20 minutes of lively discussion about the relative merits of using PDF files on a website. If you're interested in further information about the Nagoya International Personal Computer Club, please check our website, www.nipcc.org. Thank you.